Hi, Kathy Mitchell, and welcome to my actual kitchen. This is real life, so if the dog runs through, the phone rings, this ain't TV, it's the real thing. Now, if you're watching this DVD, you probably got a brand new Ready, Set, Go. And I'm gonna use this time to show you some tips and tricks that'll make it work really great for you, some things that I like to do in it for my family. So let's get started. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is take a look at your machine. It's got a great cord wrap on the bottom, so you can wrap that cord and it will sit on its end like this, or you can just leave it out on the counter and I think you'll find that's where it stays most of the time because you're going to use it every day. Now the first thing you want to do before you use your machine is season it. So what we'll do is plug it in and let it preheat so that we can season it up and get it ready to cook the first time. Now let me show you a couple of features on here. You'll notice inside there's no divider. If you're familiar with the original Express 101, it had a divider down the center. So by taking out the divider, we've given you 25% more cooking area and a lot more versatility. But we didn't forget that divider. You're going to find it in the box in an extra divider pan that'll fit right in there just like that. So you can still make the old recipes you used to make. And we've also got a great new pan called the mini food pan. And this is super for making little mini brownies or cupcakes. We're going to do all kinds of stuff with that. Now, you want to let this preheat. There's a little light here when I just plugged it in, you can see that light isn't lit yet. So it's gonna, when that turns green, it'll tell me that it's preheated and ready to cook. So while we wait for that, let's talk about recipes for a second. Because inside the box, you also found this great recipe book. Now this is filled with tips and tricks as well, plus lots and lots of great recipes. And I love it that every recipe shows you which pan you're gonna be using. It tells you the time it's gonna need to cook, how you can fix leftovers, uh, how many servings it is, and you're gonna find lots and lots of great ideas in here. But remember, this is your book, so if you change your recipe a little bit make a note inside of what you did differently so the next time you can make it the same way now you're also going to find these bonus recipes and I love this this is a lot of the stuff we made in the show you're going to find one dollar recipes you're going to find recipes under a hundred calories and recipes with less than three ingredients so it's going to be fast and simple but I think you found if you've looked through that cookbook at all that most of my recipes don't have a lot of ingredients they're all things you can find in the kitchen which makes it a lot easier to use now on this machine you're also going to find a timer because I mentioned that all the recipes go by time. It says cook for seven minutes. You're now going to be able to set that timer for seven minutes. And when it rings, you'll know your dinner or your lunch is ready. And when you when that bell rings, remember, it doesn't shut itself off. You've got an on and off switch. So when you hear the bell, be sure you turn the machine off. Otherwise, it's just going to keep on cooking. Now, that's we're going to go ahead and, and uh, brush that with a little bit of oil here. Now this is how you season it. You're going to take just a little bit of, of cooking oil, vegetable oil, butter, margarine, whatever, and you want to brush it on the inside really well. Get it covered and the top as well. This is what you're going to do just the first time. You don't have to do this every time you cook, but just get it all brushed in there just like that. And now we're just going to let it preheat and, 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 and kind of burn on there for a minute and then we'll wipe it out. So while it's doing that, let's talk about utensils. What you found in the box was this great double-sided spatula. Now this side is for taking food out of the divided pan. And I'll, you'll find it a lot easier to get food out if you work from this flat edge. I see so many people trying to get food out like this and it's hard to get it under. So work from the flat side, lift it out and onto your plate. Now when you're working in the big one, you're going to use the big, the big round spatula like that. Now you can use anything you've got in your kitchen as far as tools as long as they're safe in nonstick pans like these, uh, these tongs or something. I do not want you in this machine with metal forks or spoons or anything like that because you'll scratch that great nonstick surface. So watch for metal, but anything else is fair game. Now, this has had a chance to, to burn on a little bit. And now all you're going to do is take a paper towel and wipe it out. And what that's done is kind of gotten your, your uh, surface ready for cooking. It's kind of, kind of solidified the nonstick and made it ready to go. And you're going to love using this machine because it's really easy to use and clean up. Now, I've gotten the majority of it out with that paper towel. What you're going to find, I love to use it. Hopefully, you can get one, too. These little microfiber cloths are great because, truthfully, the easiest way to clean that machine is when it's still warm. And these are so thick and uh, absorbent that it doesn't get, burn my finger while I'm wiping it out. But look how clean that is, just perfect and ready to go. And I can just clean it up while it's hot. We'll show you clean up as we go along and cook. But for now, let's get cooking. 
Okay, we're ready to start cooking, and I'm going to show you all of the different things you can do with this machine. But for starters, let's start with just the base, the way it comes. And as I said before, this is perfect for lots of things, but I think my family's favorite is pizza. Now, there are lots and lots of different things you can use for pizza crusts. You can use tortillas, corn or flour. You can use pita bread. Find the ones that are just about six inches around, and they'll be perfect for your crust. You can even use tortilla bread. It's great for, like, Mexican pizzas. And, of course, there's that pizza sauce in the can. But, you know, I really I really want to encourage you to try my almost instant pizza crust. The recipe is in the cookbook and it is so easy to use. Once you mix it up, you can store it in the refrigerator so it's always ready for, make, for making pizza. This is just a little ball of dough. And pizza is so, so popular at my house that my family even has what we call the pizza box. And in here I keep all the little leftover dibs and dabs, things that you might normally throw away. A little piece of chicken, a little bit of broccoli, some leftover bell peppers or mushrooms. And this stuff gets used up that way so it's not cash in the trash. It goes on the pizzas and, and the kids will eat more vegetables that way. So let's start with the dough. And I'm going to show you how to deal with the cold dough. You store this into the refrigerator up to two weeks and when you're ready to make a pizza, I just take a little paper plate and pour just a little little drop of olive oil in the middle. That makes this easier to work with. Now take one of your balls of dough out of the wrapper and just drop it right on that plate and kind of roll it in the, uh, in the olive oil so it won't stick to your fingers or to the plate. And at that point you just want to start squishing it out into a circle. That's why I use the paper plate because it kind of gives me a, an idea. What you're looking for is about a six inch circle just like so and it's very easy to do and that olive oil makes it real slippery. So once you get it pretty well pressed out, we're going to go ahead and drop it right in there. That preheated machine, you can hear it start to sizzle right away. I go ahead and kind of take my fingers and press it out to the edges a little bit. And now that's ready to be pizza. So we're going to start off with some toppings. Now you want to start with dough with a, a sauce. And I just use a jarred pizza sauce. You can use leftover spaghetti sauce, whatever you have. Just put a little spoonful of it right in the center of that dough and just kind of spread it around. Now I know I said not to use metal utensils, but I'm only just spreading it on the, the crust. I'm not getting on the machine. So once you got your crust on there, you can add your toppings. And this is where everybody gets to look for what they like. I like pepperoni. And I do buy this 70% less fat turkey pepperoni. It tastes better to me and it's not so greasy. So you're just going to go ahead and put a little ring of that pepperoni. You can use Canadian bacon, you can use leftover chicken or ground beef, whatever you've got. This is the greatest way to use up leftovers and everybody loves a little fresh pizza. Now, whatever you like on a pizza, I like to put the cheese on first and then my toppings on the top. So you see, you get to have it your way when you're at your house. So just put a little light mozzarella on top of there. And I like a little bit of olive. You ever notice when you buy them at the pizzeria, they skimp on the olives? If you're making them yourself, you get to put on as many as you like. So there goes our olives. And I like some green pepper, so we'll toss a little green pepper on there. It's so handy to have everything all chopped up and ready to go, and things get used up this way. Okay, now I didn't grease the bottom because I just put the olive oil all over that crust. I do like to spray the top with a little nonstick in case that cheese would want to stick. So just a little shot of that and close the lid. And that's going to cook in seven minutes. At my house, we couldn't even find the number of the pizzeria in that seven minutes. Now I want to show you just how easy it is to make that crust. So let's clear this stuff away and I'll show you how we made that almost instant pizza crust. Let's see, we're going to need a mixing bowl. A measuring cup, some salt, and a little yeast, and some flour. All right. Now, I don't know why a lot of people are afraid of making yeast doughs, but there's only one thing you need to remember. The yeast needs warm water to rise warm water. Cold and it won't rise, hot and it'll kill the yeast. So what you're looking for is baby bottle warm. So we're going to get about, I'm letting it run right on my hand until I feel it's just about baby bottle warm. And then we're going to get a cup of water. There we go. I think my kitchen is way far away from my water heater. This is a real easy recipe. It's one cup of water and two cups of flour. 
or a cup and a half of water and three cups of flour, or two cups of water and four cups of flour, depending on how many people you're feeding, how many pizzas you want to make. If you want to have the kids over for a little pizza party, make up a big batch of this. Now, you can use the crust when it's freshly made, or you can put it in the refrigerator, as I said, and store it up to well, about two weeks. Now, you just want to go ahead and sprinkle your package of yeast right on top of that water. And then we're going to add about a teaspoon of salt. In case you didn't know, that's a teaspoon. So give it a little stir, just to get the yeast kind of mixed up with the water a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're going to go ahead and add two cups of flour. Now, if you've got a stand mixer, go ahead and do it in there. If you uh, don't have a stand mixer, put one of your kids to work doing this. Basically, it's not a big mixing job. You just want to get that flour incorporated into that water. Now, once you get this mixed up, you're going to want to cover it and put it in a warm place for about an hour and a half or two hours. And then it's ready to be pizza. If you're not ready to eat pizza right then, then you're going to go ahead and bag it up and put it away and, and store it in the refrigerator. But that's all you need to do. See how fast and easy that is? And once it's mixed, you're just going to cover it and put it in a warm place. Now, I have a, a pilot light in my oven. I can just put it in there. But in two hours, I'll show you what it's going to look like. Voila, just like that. Risen dough. Now, watch this. You can just do this right on your counter, or if you've got a little mat, baking mat, or whatever, just kind of sprinkle that dough out, that flour out there, and dump your dough. I'm going to use the spatula here. Just falls right out, just like that. Turn it over a couple of times to get some flour coated on it. You see, it's not even sticky. Now, does this look hard? No, anybody can do this. And believe it or not, this is bread. If I put this in a pan, muffin pans, and let it rise, it'd be muffins. But it's now pizza dough. Now, when, what I'm looking to do here is get it into kind of a long, skinny thing. And this makes this is the two cups of flour and one cup of water, so it makes eight, six or eight pizza crusts, depending on whether you like the thick pan pizza or the thin or crispy. I like the thick, so I cut it into six pieces. So just one. Two, three, four, five, six, close enough. Now here's how I store it, because I'm frugal. I buy these, they're called bread bags, because they're not Ziplocs. And I just put one little ball of dough in each corner and pull it up like that and give it a twist and put them in the refrigerator just like that. And those will store in the refrigerator for up to uh, two weeks. Generally, you're probably going to end up making a pizza or two with part of it and then storing the rest. But if you want to make these up ahead of time so your kids can come home from school and make some pizza, go right ahead. But that's an easy, fast way. And as you see, it's so easy. I don't think you'll ever again feel like you need to go to the store and buy a canned pizza dough. And wait till you taste this. yum Oh. All right, just like that, they're ready to go into the refrigerator. Fast and easy. We've got about two more minutes on that pizza. I'm going to clean up my mess, and then we'll come back and see how that pizza looks. There's the ding. That means our pizza's ready. Let's check it out. Oh, look at that. I wish you could smell it. Now, all we're going to do is lift it right out of there. And you see no sticking on the bottom and no cheese on the top. That is a perfect personal pizza. And I don't know, can I show? Who can see the bottom? Can you see how? Brown it as well. I guess the sound will be the teller. I'll get my microphone really close. Can you hear that crisp? Oh, so good. Didn't have to wait. And I think this pizza costs less than a dollar to make and doesn't have a whole lot of calories because I can control exactly what I'm putting on it. Oh, that is some good looking pizza. Now we're going to come back and do a recipe in the divider pan that comes with your set. We'll work our way through the pans. Back in a sec. Okay, now we're going to talk about the divided food pan. Now this is great anytime you want to cook two different things at the same time. So I use it a lot for a meat and a side dish. I use it when I'm cooking the chicken breast with the stuffing in them or the beef rolls or uh, little cakes. But remember, it's going to make a big size cake. So if you want smaller cakes, we'll sh show you how to make them smaller later. But anytime you need to cook something that's divided, this is the one you're going to use. And one of the things I love my Ready, Set, Go for is cooking things like frozen 
uh, fillets like this or chicken or anything that comes frozen. You know, things that are frozen that go in the oven. This one, for instance, says 425 degree oven for, for 25 to 28 minutes. Now, that's a long time to cook. Try explaining that to a hungry toddler. Plus, it uses a lot of energy. When you cook it in the ready, set, go, it's going to cook way faster and at a lot less energy use. So look at this, how easy. All you have to do is pull out a couple of those fillets. And let me show you a little trick. Because what touches the heating surfaces is what's going to brown and crisp. So if you just want to cook one of them, you're going to have to turn it over halfway through the cooking. If you want to cook two of them, I'll show you a little trick. I'm going to spray first with a little bit of nonstick spray and lay in my fillet. Now that's going to brown on that side and I'm going to put another one right on the top and that's going to touch the top so it's going to brown on that side. And about halfway through the cooking, I'm going to turn them over so the other side's brown. So we'll go ahead and spray the top and close the lid, and I'm going to set the timer for about seven minutes. These take about 12 to 15 minutes to cook totally, depending on how thick the fish is. So once that I turn them over for the first time, then I'm going to go ahead and put a side dish in the other side. So what I want you to get also is that it's okay to leave half of the machine empty. You don't have to fill both sides when you're cooking. All right, so while those are cooking, let's think about some dessert. And uh, I don't know about your family, but my family loves sweet things, so I'm going to make some brownie bites in that machine there. Now what I've got here is the mini food pan and I just mixed up part of a brownie mix and just filled all the little little trays with that and give them a little sweet surprise inside. I've got some Hershey's Kisses here and I'm just going to drop one in the center of each one of those. Now you can let your imagination go crazy. You want to put uh, butterscotch chips in here or a little piece of a candy bar or I tried marshmallows. I thought it'd make like a uh, one of those cream filled cakes but the marshmallow just disappeared so I'll save you some trouble. D marshmallows don't work. You want to put some nuts in there, maybe the kisses with almond filling, whatever you like. Just unwrap them and pop them right in the center and that cake's going to rise up around them so it'll give me a, a brownie kiss. Brownie with a nice wet kiss inside. Now, look here. One of the things you're going to find once you start using your Ready, Set, Go is as you walk through the supermarket, you're going to start looking for things that look like they'll fit in here really good. And one day I stumbled upon these little phyllo shells. Now, phyllo dough is not like pie crust. It's not got the fat that pie crust has. So these are actually pretty low cal. They're not sweet, so they'll accept a sweet filling or a savory filling, either one. They don't have a lot of flavor of their own. And look how cute they are. They just come just like this in these little mini cups and they fit right inside the mini food pan so I can make these little mini quiches. Now all I did for these was drop one of those little cups in each well and filled them with a mixture of egg that I put a little bit of bacon and some green onions in. So I've got quick little bacon and onion quiches. You could put tomatoes in there or zucchini, whatever you liked. Or you could fill them, just bake them empty and fill them with chocolate mousse or just something little tiny for a tiny little sweet bite. But it's just so much fun to play with the pans and you'll come up with all kinds of great uses. Those are great at a party and people love to come in the kitchen and help make the stuff. So I don't have to worry that I'm stuck in the kitchen while the party's going on in the other room because when I have my ready set go out in the kitchen, everybody gathers around in here and everybody wants to have a hand at putting something in it. So we're going to go ahead and bake these little brownie bites. I'm just going to set them right in there. Remember you're going to line up the notches on this with the little holes in there so set it right in there and again I'm gonna spray the inside of the lid because if it touches that chocolate it might stick so just a quick spray on the inside of the lid close it down and those are gonna take about oh I'm just gonna say about seven minutes to cook okay that fish is ready to turn over now I'm gonna show you a little quick trick here I'm gonna go ahead and move it to the other side so I'm gonna spray the other side and I'm gonna take this one which is brown on that side and put the unbrown side down. And then we'll take this one and turn him over this way. See, this side's brown already, so I'm just going to put it that way. And now the other two sides are going to brown. So on the other side, I'm going to go ahead and make a little rice side dish. So for that, we're going to use about a third of a cup of minute rice. I didn't it well there. And about a third of a cup of chicken broth. And then I like to add some vegetables to it because it adds a little color and it also gets a little more vegetables into my kids. So there's our water. And I just, I just keep these mixed vegetables in the freezer. So anytime you just need a little color in there. 
in they go. All right, I'll give it a little stir. And that rice is going to cook up, and that fish is going to finish browning in about five more minutes. So there we go. OK, those brownies just rang their little bell. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yum. Can you see those? Just a little piece of the kiss tipping out of there. Now, normally I let these cool for just a few minutes before I unplate them, but let's, let's unpan them. But let's try it and see what we got here. Just going to flip them over. Oh, those cute. Look at that. Perfect little brownie bites. That's a great way to show people you love them. And you know what? When you're on a diet, sometimes you just got to have something sweet. Way better off to eat one of these and get that brownie out of your system than eat a whole great big plate of them. So look at these as diet brownies. And remember when we did the, the little mini food pan in the infomercial, we did so many things. It's one of the most versatile pans. This is the one we did the little uh, eggsters, the little tater tot with the egg on it, a little smoky with some some pancake batter in it. You're just going to have so much fun with this, whether it's for hors d'oeuvres or kids' parties or whatever. You're going to have a great time with that. Now, let's take a look at our fish. Oh, yes. Now, remember, this is the fish that normally would have needed a 425 degree oven and 28 minutes cooked it in about 15 minutes in here. The first seven and a half was just cooking the fish, and then I added the rice for the last part. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take these out of here and serve them up. Oh, those look delicious. And I've got a little plate here. Yum. Oh. And one of the things that you'll love about the fact that you can take these inserts out of the, the machine is that it makes it much easier to get the food on the plate. Pardon my backside here. Look at that rice. That's a great little lunch. And these will just go right in the dishwasher so your cleanup is a breeze. Now, I'll be back with some more pans.